Building muscle and burning fat at the same time is not only possible, but it's also the best option for many people. Doing both simultaneously is referred to as body recomposition, and scientific research confirms that it can work very effectively. Specifically, it tends to be most effective for beginners and people that have a high body fat percentage. However, even if you've been working out for a while or you have a low body fat percentage, you don't have to go the traditional route of switching between cutting and bulking phases. Instead, you can focus on body recomposition, and to do so, I want to give you guys eight tips to be able to build muscle while also burning fat. The very first tip is to forget about your weight on the scale, because if you're measuring your results incorrectly, you might feel that what you're doing isn't working, even though it is, in fact, working very well. Solely relying on body weight as a measure of progress can actually be misleading and counterproductive. This is because the scale only reflects the overall weight of our bodies, which includes not just fat, but also muscle, bones, organs, and water weight. As we put ourselves through strength training exercises to build muscle, our bodies go through significant changes in composition. Muscle is denser than fat, meaning that as we gain muscle, it takes up less space than the equivalent amount of fat. So even if we are successfully building muscle and burning fat at the same time, the scale may not show a substantial decrease in body weight. Instead of focusing on the number on the scale, it's important to monitor other indicators of progress, such as changes in body measurements, improved strength and endurance, what you look like in the mirror, and how well your clothes fit. The next tip is to focus your workouts purely on building muscle rather than burning fat. In fact, burning fat shouldn't be on your mind at all when it comes to creating and fulfilling your workouts. The fat loss is gonna come from your diet. To build muscle, you need to increase training volume and progressively overload over time. Training volume can be summed up as total sets times reps times the weight load used. Focusing on progressively increasing the weight load is one of the most straightforward ways to ensure that you're increasing training volume and stimulating your muscles to grow. A great tip for the number of sets and reps to effectively stimulate muscle growth is to aim for 18 to 20 heavy sets per muscle group per week and 6 to 10 reps per set. I recommend splitting your weekly number of sets into two workouts with 9 to 10 sets per muscle per workout. To accomplish this, you can stick to a split training routine like chest and back on one day, then legs the next day, then arms and abs on the third day, then take a day off and repeat. Alternatively, you can also do full body three times a week, and in that case, it would be six sets per muscle group per workout. As you up the weight load you use, your reps will likely drop, which is fine. That's why we have an upper range of 10 reps and a lower range of six reps. If you can perform a weight load for 10 reps, you wanna up the weight, and then most likely your rep count will drop. And then you're gonna work on getting your reps back up to 10 with that heavier weight load as you get stronger over time. So after all that, you'll repeat this process of upping the weight and dropping the reps, then upping the reps. Now, this is a very basic strategy that works very well, especially in your beginner stages of development. But another tip to really help you get stronger and progressively overload is to incorporate periodization and to switch your rep ranges up every three weeks or so. This will help you lift much more weight over time and in turn build much more muscle. A great starting point is to aim for 6 to 8 reps for 3 weeks, then 10 to 12 reps for 3 weeks, and finally 3 to 5 reps for the last 3 weeks. Then repeat that 9 week cycle again and again. You'll likely find that each time that you go back to a previous rep range cycle, you'll be able to lift a heavier weight load than you did last time. The higher rep ranges will help you build more muscular endurance, while the lower ones will help you generate more power and strength. Keep in mind that each of these rep ranges should be matched with a weight load that's heavy enough to make you hit failure before the upper end of that rep range. So you should be lifting a much heavier weight for three to five reps as opposed to 10 to 12 reps. I know that none of this sounds like the quick fix magic bullet to muscle growth, but if you're consistent with this training strategy for even nine weeks, I think you'll be very impressed with your results, both in terms of strength and muscle growth. Moving on to cardio, the main tip with cardio is to keep it very low impact and at a very low intensity to prevent it from interfering with your weight training workouts. Cardio is necessary for many sports and it can be great for your health, but it's absolutely not required for body recomposition. And if you overdo cardio, it can interfere more than it can help. 
Like I said, to optimally build muscle and burn fat at the same time, we want to focus the workouts on muscle growth rather than burning additional calories through cardio. So for cardio, I recommend just walking or something equivalent in intensity so that you can be fully recovered for each of your weight training workouts. If your cardio is leaving you really sore, I recommend switching to a lower impact, lower intensity form of cardio. Now, of course, as I already mentioned, your nutrition is very important. And the first tip in relation to nutrition is to choose a primary goal, even though you'll be tackling both at the same time. If you're currently a beginner at lifting weights or you haven't lifted weights in a long time, your body is very primed for muscle growth. So your primary goal should be to start with a calorie deficit because even in a calorie deficit, your body still has an amplified ability to gain muscle. It's a similar situation if you're obese or if you carry a lot of body fat. All that body fat is essentially a very large reserve of energy that your body can pull calories from to fuel fat loss, muscle growth, and essential bodily functions. So if you're anything above roughly 15% body fat as a man or 24% body fat as a woman, fat loss should be your primary goal and you can set a deficit ranging from 5 to 30% below maintenance. The more fat you have, the more you'll want to set a higher deficit of 20, 25, or 30% for maintenance. But if you're closer to, for example, that borderline 15% body fat mark as a man, you'll want to set a lower deficit of just a 5 to 10% reduction from maintenance. Now, if you're under 12% body fat as a man or 21% body fat as a woman, and you've been doing weight training for some time now, so you're not a beginner, in that case, you wanna set building muscle as your primary goal, and all you need is a 5% surplus above maintenance. So you'll just figure out your maintenance calories by using the link in the description, and then from there, subtract or add the correct corresponding percentage that aligns with your current body shape. After you have that number, you wanna ensure that you're eating plenty of protein. An easy way to figure out what that means for your body is to multiply your body weight by 0.73 grams. That's gonna give you the number of grams of protein that you wanna to aim to take in every day. Write that down and multiply that number by four. Then subtract that new number from your total daily calories that you got from the previous step. Then you're gonna take your remaining calories and divide them in half. And finally, divide one of those halves by nine to get your grams of fat per day, and the other half by four to get your grams of carbs per day. Of course, you can adjust to have more fat and less carbs or more carbs and less fat, but a good starting point is just to divide these energy calories right down the middle. So now you have your grams of protein, carbs, and fats that you need to build muscle and burn fat at the same time. Next, you'll wanna actually track your calories for at least a week or two using a calorie tracker like MyFitnessPal. This will ensure that you're actually hitting your calorie targets every day. Since burning fat and building muscle at the same time is a process based on precise nutrient requirements, I do highly suggest that you at least do this until you have a good idea of exactly how many calories and macros are coming from the foods you eat on a daily basis. If you pretty much eat the same foods every day, a week will be enough time for you to understand exactly how much you should be eating. But if you're constantly switching up your meals, you may have to track a little longer, like two weeks or maybe even a month. If you don't mind tracking in general, there's no harm in just continuously tracking to make sure that you're hitting your desired macro and calorie targets. Finally, the last tip is to ensure that you get adequate rest and sleep. Sleep deprivation is proven to drastically slow fat loss and it makes it extremely difficult to maintain and gain muscle. Seven to nine hours of sleep per night is an ideal target for most people. While you sleep, your body will heal broken down muscle tissue, it'll burn fat, and you'll be releasing extremely favorable hormones for recovery. As far as recovery goes, just make sure that you give each of your muscle groups at least 48 hours of rest before training them again. So if you do decide to do full body workouts, you wanna do them every other day. If you do split training, just make sure that you're not overlapping your workouts like the example split training routine that I provided in the beginning of this video. From there, you just reevaluate your progress every couple weeks and adjust if necessary. If you're not gaining any muscle, you can try upping your caloric intake by 200 to 300 calories per day. If on the other hand, you're not losing fat, you can try dropping your calories by 200 to 300 calories per day. And these calories that you adjust from should mostly be coming from fats and carbs since your protein intake should remain consistent at 0.73 grams per pound of body weight per day. So that about wraps it up. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you're looking for a done for you approach to burning fat and building muscle at the same time, you can check out my free six week shred. You'll be put through a streamlined process and you'll get a full workout plan with a video exercise library, a customizable diet plan, a recipe book, 
and an accountability coach to help guide you through the whole process. Visit my website where you can get all of this for free just by putting your best foot forward and simply sticking to the plan. To find out more, you can click the link in the description below or visit my website directly at gravitytransformation.com. I'll see you guys soon. Pump it.